in that loop if you take this one hour training. And I'm going to show you how to what we're going to go over in this training is how to log in, how to know you're in the brokerage account, which has uh, available to you over 3000 real estate forms. They're interactive. We're going to go how to submit a loop for review so that you can get paid uh, for your commission check, how to do that, that that loop team is notified and starts to approve your paperwork, which is required by the state of Massachusetts that we have on file. And also at that same time, when you submit for a review, um, you should put in your check request, which also notifies the accounting department that you're gonna have a, a closing coming soon. So we're gonna go into going over um, uh, how to submit a loop for review. We're gonna go how to add documents to your loop. We're gonna uh, show you how to, there's three ways you can add documents to your loop. We're gonna go over those three ways. We're gonna show you where things are located on the loop. We're gonna show you about your dashboard on that loop. And so those are just some of the topics that we go over. I do tend to talk relatively fast. So the good news is that uh, this is being recorded even as we speak. And if you wanna go over it, all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash real online agent resources. And so that's where you're gonna go. And that's where you're going to uh, find this recording uh, after we finish. So I'm just typing that in. I'm just typing that into our chat so you would know, but that's where you want to go uh, to have the recording, not just this recording, any recording that we do for the lunch and learns you will find on that uh, where that on that Facebook page. So it's uh, 1232. Welcome again. And I'm going to start. How do you log into dot loop? Now, everybody gets a dot loop, a watered down basic version. If you belong to the MLS pin, you're going to get a watered down version of dot loop, but not at Lair. We want you to succeed. And so we uh, provide the bells and whistles of a brokerage account at Lair. Not all brokerages will take on this expense for their agents, but Lair Realty Partners does because we want you really to be to succeed and we want you to be happy and we also want your transactions to go smooth. So I can guarantee that if you take this training, your transactions will go smooth, at least the paperwork side of your transaction. I can't help you with the people side of transactions, but I can help you with the paper side. So when you become a layer agent, you are going to be invited in to the Lair Realty Loop brokerage account. Okay, so you're going to be sent an email with your login information. You're going to log in and create a password. This is where you go. It's just www.loop.com. And it says, Welcome to Dot Loop. You're going to put in your uh, email that we assign to you because remember, you're being invited into this brokerage account. It's not a basic watered down version. Okay. And you'll create a password and you're going to sign in. And once you sign in, you're going to see that you're connected to your dashboard. This is your dashboard. Now, this right here is the East Long Meadow. I also am the admin for the East Long Meadow office. So this is the dashboard. But what I want to do is I want to log in as one of you. So this is my training that loop account. And so this is how you can tell you're in the brokerage account. If it says premium over on the left hand side, you will know that you are in the dot loop bells and whistles uh, account in the brokerage account, which has three that over 3000 real estate forms. We have Connecticut forms on here. We have Rhode Island forms on here. We have New Hampshire forms on here. We have Maine forms on here. Of course, we have all of the Massachusetts uh, Mar forms are on here all interactive that you just fill in and you can send it to your uh, agents to sign, your clients to sign, very easy to do. And most people, I would say 90% of the population out there rather do a transaction like this. Nobody has the time to drive to an office to get a signature with gas at $4 a gallon. You're not gonna wanna drive all over to get signatures when you can do it in the convenience of your home. 
You can go over all of these with your client. You can do a Zoom call so they know what they're signing. You can send it to attorneys to review or family members to review. So this is the way to go. So you'll know you're in the brokerage if it says premium over here. If it ever tells you over here, you have like 10 practice loops left, nine practice loops or whatever. If it ever asks you for money, you're not in the right account. If you're not in the right account, the dot loop team cannot see your loops. So that's why it's very important to make sure that you're in the dot loop account uh, that is attached to the brokerage so that our dot loop team who will start going over uh, all of your paperwork that we need by the state to uh, approve your loop for commission will be doing it and looking for it. So just make sure you're right here. What I wanna say before we start is 90% of what you're going to do is going to be on the right-hand side of your, of your computer. Um, everything that is uh, blue is an interactive field. So anything that's blue is interactive and I'll begin to show you that in a minute. So before we get going, because the first thing I'm going to do is how to create a loop. So what is a loop or a file? I like to say it as it's a virtual filing cabinet. So if you've been in real estate for any amount of time, you know that you used to go to the office, used to get a manila folder, used to put the address on the outside of the manila folder. Then you would walk over to the uh, um, where we had the forms and you would pick all the forms that you needed. So if you were a listing agent, you would pick the exclusive right to list, agent sell, agent's um, disclosure, lead paint, you'd put it all in the folder, you fill it all out, you have your clients sign it. Well, now that's all done virtually and all in one place. So basically what that loop uh, is, it's a uh, virtual filing cabinet that's easy for you to, to use. So, this is your dashboard. And I just wanna see the filter system. So right now I have it filtering that it's only showing me my active listings and my under agreement. You will not see any solds right now because I have told that loop to filter all of my loops that I only wanna see active listing under agreement. You won't see a sold, you won't see an archived here because I have it hiding archives. However, if I take this off and I uncheck these and I wanna see every single loop that I've ever made, you're gonna see that the page goes on and on forever. You're gonna have pre-offer, you're gonna have under agreement, you're gonna have sold, you're gonna have, un you're gonna have uh, I got under agreement, I got sold, it just goes on here, has no status and the list will just go on and on and on. These are all of the loops or files that I have created just for training purposes, and it goes on and on. So if you're like me, I only like to see what I'm working on. I like my working area to be very clean and streamlined. And so what I do is I will put the filter system on and I'm gonna say that I only wanna see my active listings and my under agreement, and then I'm gonna hit the apply. And now you'll see that's all I'm going to see. So basically this as an agent are the deals that I am currently working on. Now, once again, I am not an agent. This is just my training module. So, but you will see that it's only gonna show me active listings. I like to say this because at the end of the year, you may want to just pull or see all of your solds for the year. If you hit that and you apply, then all of your solds, if you want to send a holiday greeting or maybe a New Year's greeting, telling them that you love servicing them. And if they have any family members that they would want to refer to you, you'd be happy to service them as well. And so now you're only going to get the statuses that are sold. So it's very important. And we're going to go over this in the future that you make sure you're changing the status on all of your listings to do not leave them blank. A sold should always stay sold. You never archive solds. Archived is only for deals that fall apart. Sold should stay sold. That's a completed transaction from start to finish. So I wanted to show you this filter system. Uh, and then another cool system I really like is this is uh, this is called you can your dashboard. This is the grid view, which I like. Again, I think it's very streamlined. You can add a picture, which I really like. Here's the list view, okay, no pictures. It won't show you any picture. And then here is the compact view. I don't particularly like any of these. I really, really, really like the grid view because you can upload the picture of the house because sometimes you remember the house more than 
the people's names and whatever. If you notice, all of the loops in here are done by street address. So all of your loops need to be submitted and the loop name needs to be by the street address. So if you go down here, this was a buyer, see type of loop, it was we represented the buyer. And at first this loop was just named Jack and Jill Smith. But once we they found this property and the offer was accepted and purchase and sales were, were done and inspections, we changed the name from Jack and Jill Smith to 123 Main Street, Mass Jack and Jill Smith. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So step one, what I'm gonna try, what I'm gonna show you to do is how to create a loop. So again, what you're gonna do is everything that we're gonna be referring to is going to be pretty much 90% on the right-hand side. We have a big blue button. Remember I said blue means it's an interactive field. And so we are going to add a loop. So I'm gonna pretend that we are going to create this file. Uh, we are going to be at 35 Main Street in East Long Meadow. We got a call and we're going to go meet this person to view their house. So again, I'm going to be 10 on the listing agent. If you were the buyer agent, you would put in your client's name first and we'll change the name to the street address after. So what you're going to do is you're going to type in the property address. You're going to hit again on the right hand side. Remember, 90 percent of what you're going to do is on the right hand side. Here's a blue interactive. You're going to hit this. So this is asking you what how are you assisting in this real estate? Are you a buyer agent? Are you a listing agent, Massachusetts? So I just wanna show you something. If I try to continue without picking a template, it's gonna give me this warning that I must select a loop template. You're not gonna be able to go forward without picking a loop template. And we did this purposely because we only want the forms in the loop that you need. You don't need buyer forms if you're a listing agent. You don't need listing forms if you're a buyer agent. So we set this up that you're only going to get the uh, proper paperwork that you need for the role that you are taking on in this real estate transaction. And so as you can see, there's Massachusetts listing, Massachusetts buyer templates. We have Massachusetts rental. I know a lot of people in the eastern part of the state do rentals. Western Mar Massachusetts, where I'm from, our agents have a few different forms that they like to use. So we set that up for them. We have New Hampshire listings, New Hampshire buyer rental. And there is a slide down over here because we have more. We have Massachusetts, we have Rhode Island, and we have Connecticut. So for this training purposes, I am going to put that we are a Massachusetts listing. I am going to be a real estate agent in a listing transaction. And now on the right-hand side, if you can hit continue, it will let you to continue. This is where you can upload a photo. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Uh, you're probably going to do a CMA. So you probably have a photo of your client's house. So very easy. You're just gonna hit upload the photo. You're gonna go to your pictures. And I'm just going to pick a picture that I might have in here, right here. And there it is. That's it. As easy as that. And you're going to hit done. So right now, Dialoop is creating your folder for you and putting in all your paperwork that you would possibly need for this transaction to be successful. And so it's uploading. Now you can see that this is a new transaction. It does have the street address. It did pick the type of transaction this loop is or file because we said it was a listing for sale. We need to fill, here's the blue. Remember I said anything that's blue is an interactive field. You should get used to it and fill it out. So the status of this, it's a, you could say private listing or pre-listing. Maybe you haven't gotten the listing yet, but you're going to do the CMA. So let's do a pre-listing. And by doing the CMA, you think the house is going to be $350,000. You can put that in. Now what happened is I opened up the loop. So let's just go back. It's not going to show up here because remember, my filters are on solds only. So I want to, there it is. So I took it off. I am filtering no filters. Here's the listing. And this is the folder closed. And so what you want to do is you hit on it, which opens up the folder, which then shows you all of the forms that we at Lair have placed in there for you. 
you're going to see that within this loop, there are two folders. There's a listing folder, which is, again, everything that you're going to need to do this transaction right here. But if any case, there might be something else. Maybe you need an extension. You're going to find that there's another folder in this loop called Other Important Documents. And so here is an extension of time is right here. You might need that or dual agency or you might need coming, uh, let's see, commission statement. So if it's not up here in the folder that you're going to use, it'll definitely be down here. But again, if you like to be like me, I like my work surfaces clean and very uh, precise. You can shrink this so you don't even see it. So the folder is still there. You just click on it, it opens it up or you click on it and you shut the folder. So now what you're seeing is very clean, everything that you're gonna need for this listing. If you notice over here, you're gonna see that these two documents are required because by the state of Massachusetts, an exclusive right to sell and a mandatory licensee consumer relationship report are going to be mandatory and will be needed in order for the dot loop team to approve your loop for commission. So phase one or step one is to create the loop, which we did. We created the loop, 35 Main Street, East Long Meadow. And here's a question. When should you create a loop? The answer is the same for if you're a listing agent or a buyer agent, you should always create your loop prior to going to your client's house and prior to showing a first property, because we all know that if you're a buyer agent, you need this mandatory licensed consumer relationship by, signed prior to showing your first house. So to answer that question, when should you create a loop? You should create a loop the same time right before you meet your client. So if you're a buyer agent, you would create the loop with your client's name. If you're a listing agent, you're gonna create the loop with the listing address. So, so step one uh, to creating was creating a loop. Step two, which I highly, and I do pause here, please do not, please do not skip this step. The purpose of this training is to make your transaction, your paperwork to go easy and without a hitch. And if you set it up and do it the way we are teaching you, I promise you, I absolutely promise you, your transaction paperwork wise is going to be an ease and a breeze if you do not skip step two. So I really do emphasize this. Step two is add the people to your loop. So if you just scroll down, you're gonna see this people section down here. And here I am as the agent, but you notice on the on the on the right hand side, which I say 90% of what you're going to do is on the right hand side. Notice these are all blue. They're interactive. You need to assign yourself a role. And basically what you're doing here is you're telling dot loop that you are going to be the listing agent. And this is very important because if you don't put yourself a role when you go to fill out these required forms, it will not input your signature there. It's going to be so much easier if you make sure that you fill in your role. This is very, very important. Please do not skip this. So who else could you put in here? Well, if you know, if your client knows what attorney they're going to use, you should put the attorney because you know you're going to be sharing paperwork, signed documents and everything like that. So how to add a person? You're just going to hit again on the right hand side, add a person. And I am going to just, this is one of our attorneys. I've already had them in here. And I am going to put him as the seller's attorney. If you slide down here, you got to give him a role. Okay. I'm going to give him seller's attorney and I'm going to add the person. He cannot see anything in the loop unless you share it with him. So of course, who else would you put in here? You're going to put your client because they're going to have to sign the paperwork. So we're going to add them again. And now I'm going to add Mary Glavy. She is my seller. And I'm going to add her email address, which I already have it in here. And of course, remember, I have to give her a role because it's going to assign her as the seller on all of the paperwork. It's going to make it very easy for her to sign. So what I'm going to do is I have to give her a role and I'm going to add her as a seller. Now, there is by the state of Massachusetts, it is required 
by the state of Massachusetts that we have your client's phone number. So I am just gonna put a phone number in here. Now, this could be a cell phone or a landline. It doesn't matter. The phone number goes here. Disregard the cell up here. The phone goes there. And you're gonna need to know what property they are selling. They are selling number 35, North Main Street, no unit number in East Long Meadow in the state of Massachusetts with a zip code. So that took two seconds to do. We're gonna add that information. And now we know who the seller is and we know who the list agent is now. Who else should you put here? Once you have a buyer agent, you should add them. A lot of people are afraid to add people because they think, no, they're going to be able to see everything in my loop. You, they will not be able to see anything in your loop unless you share it with them. The only caveat to that is when you add a person, never, never, never check this add to my team. If you check this add to my team, then they will be able to see everything in your loop. The only reason or any time you would check this is number one, if you do have a team and you want your team to be able to see your loops, or if you have a transaction coordinator, you're going to add them and you're going to check this so that they can see everything in your loop. But that would be the only time you never put the seller on your team, you never put the buyer on your team, you never put an attorney on the team, because once you do this, it causes them not to be able to sign any documents, okay? Because a team member will not sign documents. The list agent signs documents and the seller or the buyer sign documents. So you definitely want to put the agent here. So that was step two. So step one was create the loop. Step two was add the people. Now step three is to send your client the forms to sign. How do you do that? You go back up to the listing folder and you just click on this exclusive right to sell. And that loop is going to say, hey, do you want us to autofill this? Because we recognize that Mary Glavy is the seller and that you're the agent. Do you want us to autofill this? And you can search. This is another thing. You could put the property address in here because not always is the seller's address the actual property address you're selling so it's important that uh you put the actual property address the property address that you are selling like again a lot of times it is not the same address as where your seller lives but in this instance we're going to fill this out and we are going to put that it is okay and so you're going to scroll down and you're going to say auto fill and look at that now it has put in me, I don't have to type in Mary's name. I don't have to type in Leia Realty Partners. I don't even have to type in the address. You can, anything that's blue is interactive. So you're going to want to put the book and page. You're going to want to check off if there is a recording devices. You're going to want to check off what your percentage is. Let's put a big 6% in there. And then you're going to want to come down here. You can fill all of this out and you should, you know, I'm just doing it for training purposes. I'm skipping that. And you're gonna come down here and you're gonna notice that Mary Glavy, your seller already has a place to sign this once you fill it out. You're gonna share it with her so she can sign. But look at this, listing agent. If you just hover over this, because I have told that loop that I am the listing agent, I gave myself the role, I can sign now. There's my name, there's my initials, I adopt and sign. And now I can share this with my client. However, I just wanna make a note here that, uh, that loop defaults to two sellers and two buyers. So if you do not have a second seller, just click on this up here. You're going to go over here and you're going to assign that spot to no one. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to save this, but we're not going to share it because we're going to share them all in one email. And so we're going to go back over here. It's asking us, you have not shared this. Would you like to share it now? No, because we want it. If we share, each one, it's going to show up in different emails, but there's a way of sending all of the paperwork that needs to be signed in one email. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's just go over that again. Now you'll notice that this required document has now, it says now not submitted, which means that it is required. You filled it out, but you have not submitted it to the dot loop team to approve it, which we will do later on. So let's just do this again. We're going to click this here because it's required. 
it's going to say, hey, we're recognizing Mary's the seller, you're the buyer, and it has your license name in there, your number, and you're going to autofill. And here's the agency disclosure. Again, here is the blue interactive fields, which you have to fill out. If you do not check this off, who you represent, the doubt loop team will return this to you and your commission, your loop will not be approved. So we're going to check that we are the seller's agent. You are always a designated agent if you work for Lair. So we've checked that off for you. You're going to represent that you're the seller here. You're going to go ahead and sign. Notice how it signed my name, it printed my name, it even gave my license number, and then I write that I'm a broker. It also has layer and our layer number, because everybody looks for that. It does have our buyer, a place for her to, to sell. We can check off she's the seller. And again, we want to double check here, and we're just going to assign this to no one, because we only have one seller, okay? And so we are going to save that. So now I'm going to go back. Now we're going to pretend that this loop was built in 19, I mean, this house was built after 1978, so we don't need lead paint. But the lead paint is here if you need it. Now, of course, we could not make this required because not all houses were built prior to 1978, so this could not be a required field. Also, seller's statement of property of condition is not a required uh, form in Massachusetts, however, in Connecticut and in uh, New Hampshire, this is a required form, okay? So what have we done? So step one was create the loop. Step two was fill out the, create the loop and put your paperwork in. Step two was add the people. Please do not skip that step. Step three is share the documents for your agents, for your client to see. So once again, you're gonna wanna click and check everything you wanna send your client you're going to see a big blue bear. Uh, once I click this, you're going to see share. You're going to see a blue share. Again, it's on the right-hand side of your screen. So once I hit the check that I want to share this, here's the share big button. You're going to click everything you want to share in one email to your agent, to your, I'm sorry, client. Once you hit share, it's going to recognize that Mary Glavy has to sign these and that she can sign it. So because we put in the people section that Mary Glavy and we assigned her role as the seller, it is recognizing that the seller has to sign two fields in two places in these documents. And it's given her the option to sign. Notice how we entered Niles Kersane, who is the seller's attorney. But at this point, Niles doesn't have to sign anything. It recognizes that he's an attorney, does not have to sign it. So they didn't check it. So the way of doing this, the proper way of doing it is to assign your roles. It'll do make your eat work so much easier. Then what you do is you just go down here to custom message. Hello, Mary, please sign. Looking forward to listing your property. Okay, now before you hit the share, but you will share those two forms with her in one email. I just want to uh, do this here because attach PDF to email. I always, always, always will attach a, uh, I will always check this off. What does checking this off do? When you check this off, it gives your client two ways to sign the document. They can sign it through dot loop and sign electronically, which is 90% of everybody does that. Or they can print the PDF, sit down, read it, maybe send it. The reason I do this is what if it's an older client and their children want to read everything before their parents sign anything? Or maybe it's just somebody who's too busy and really wants the attorney to look over anything before they sign. So if you attach it as a PDF, you can easily forward it to whoever you want to and they can read it. They can't change anything in it. So they can't change anything, but they will be able to read everything and it gives your clients two ways to sign. So let's take that scenario of an older couple. They sent it to their children. Their children read it and said, yes, mom, you can sign it. So basically they can go back into the email that you sent them and they can sign it now electronically using dot loop, or they can actually print it, sign it, scan it back up and send it to you that way. Some people prefer that. 
but I always tell people to check this because it gives the agent and the client two ways of signing the document or reviewing the document. So you're going to want to do that. So we're going to share this right now. And you're going to see that it's saying that this was sent to other people. And now you're seeing that it's waiting on others for signature. So this has been sent to your client and it's waiting on them to sign it. So say, let's just go into one of my other loops. Hopefully I can find one. Uh, let's go over here and see if this one doesn't say so. I'm trying to find what it's going to look like once they actually sign a document. I had Mary Glavy uh, fill out some of these for me. Uh, let me see if I got one in here. See, these are waiting. I just want to show you what it would look like. It just says after it says has has signed. It will say signed, and I can't seem to find one that says that. Uh, let me see. Let me just scroll down further down. All right. I can't find one that actually says signed, but it'll say signed. So that's how you know that if you go into here, you can look at it and say, hey, my client hasn't signed it yet. So there is a built-in email system into Dotloop, which I love. So say you sent this on Friday and you come into work on Monday and you pull this up to see if they signed it. First of all, you would be notified if they signed it in your email. So if you didn't see that they signed it, you can look over here. You're going to pull it up. It says, OK, you can send them an email. So right here is your email. You're going to go in here. You're going to click on who you want to send a message to. I want to send it to my client, Mary Glavy. OK, and you say, hello, Mary. Uh, did you have questions? about the forms because I noticed you haven't signed. And so you're going to send this off to your client and you just hit the send button. And this is recording everything that you're doing. OK, this said that I shared it with her the date I shared it. And so right now, Mary Glavy, who's an admin of ours, is getting all of these emails. She knows that I do this. So remember, just make sure you click on the one that's in black is the one you're sending the email to, and it'll show you any past emails. And just for note, this is how the dot loop team is going to communicate to you. They are going to use the built-in email in dot loop. So right here is how you access that. So the three steps of setting up and uh, setting you up for a successful transaction is number one, make the loop. When do you make it? You make it prior to meeting your client, both for buyer and seller. Number two, fill in the people section and give everybody a role. Very important. Number three, share the documents with your client, and then you can start showing properties or doing whatever you need. So Let's pretend that our client did sign this. And so now it's not a pre-listing any longer. It's an actual active listing. According to the state of Massachusetts, these forms need to be signed before a listing can go active in the MLS. So please make sure this is the status where we are in this loop. And so now we're an active listing, okay? So that's very important to make sure you train, change your status. So now I'm gonna go into let me see if I have any questions. I don't have any questions in our chat. So now I'm going to go into how do you submit a loop for review so that you, the dot loop team will be notified and that the accounting team is going to be notified that, hey, I'm going to have a closing coming soon. I need you to review my paperwork to make sure we have everything that the state of Massachusetts is required if they come in and audit us. So how do you do that? Well, we're going to go in here into your loop. So we're just going to go say you logged in. You are going to find out that this is the loop that we want to submit for review. So remember, this is your filing cabinet. You can see all of the folders with their EA address on it, but we need to open it up to see if we actually submitted all the paperwork. So what you're going to do up here again on the right hand side of the screen, it is blue, which means it's interactive you are going to hit the submit for review button. 
What it is now saying is additional details are required before you can even submit this loop for review. We need an MLS number and we need the year made. Now, unfortunately, this really is an information screen. And if you start to type the stuff in here, it'll work until you get to the state. It won't allow you to it. So I'm just going to show you where you should input this. This is very important. This is where people get stuck 90% of the time. This is just telling you information they're missing. So it's telling me I'm missing an MLS number and a year built. So I'm going to X out of here. I'm going to go to view details. This is where you should make all of your changes. View details. You're going to hit that. And we can see that Mary Glavy is our seller. If we needed to add any information there, you just hit the edit button. It's showing that I am the listing agent here. If I needed to add anything, it's there. But if you scroll down under property address, it is asking right here for the MLS number. We're going to type an MLS number and we need the year built. So we're going to say that this was built in 1990 and just going to save everything on the bottom here. Make sure you save. Now you're going to hit the submit for review. And now it's telling you, great, you have two folders inside this loop. Which one do you want to submit to the uh, dot loop team? I'm going to show you what folders we do have. So if you remember, we have the listing folder and we have other important documents folder. Now, if you were dual agency on this, you'd probably want to submit a listing folder and a buyer folder. And I'll show you how to add a folder in a minute. But let's just go back to submit for review. It's asking us which folder we want to submit. We want to submit the list, the paperwork that's in the listing folder. And we're going to tell them it's a listing review and you're going to submit it. So there, right there, it's been folder has been submitted. Now see how this went from required to not submitted to now it's been submitted. So that's how you also know if you've submitted your paperwork to the dot loop team as well. You'll see it says submitted. They have been now notified that you would like them to submit the loop for review. To help you with that, you might ask, what does the state of Massachusetts require that we have on file in order for us to be in agreement with the, the laws of Massachusetts? And what you're gonna to wanna to do before you hit submit for review is you really want to check this little thing. We made it very easy for you. It's called pending, it's called layer pending file checklist. You should definitely check this before you submit the loop review. I should have told you that before, but if you click this and you open it, it's going to tell you everything that we need as a brokerage in order for your loop to be approved so that you can get paid. So if you're on the buy side, we're going to need agency, we're going to need a signed offer, we're going to need a PNS agreement with all addendums. Now, if you have a PNS agreement in there, but there's an extension of time that's only signed by the seller or by the buyer, it will be returned to you by the dot loop team. It needs to be fully executed. If there was a price change addendum, it needs to be fully executed. So I just want to make that out that all addendums are part of the purchase and sales and need to be fully executed or the dot loop team will return that for you. Lead paint, if it's built. Now this one, we would not need lead paint because we said this house was built in 1990. And uh, they will check this. This is one of the very things, the very first things that the state, when you get audited, they pull they want to see your five listings, five UAGs, and five solds. And if the house was built prior to 1978, if there's not a lead paint, it's a $10,000 infraction for every one that is not filled out. And if it's filled out incorrectly, there's also an infraction and money involved. So if you are a buyer agency and you have a contract, if you use buyer agent contracts, it is definitely now required by the state. If you're on the listing side, this is what we need. Agency disclosure, listing agreement, dual agency, purchase sale with all the denim, seller's description of property. If your client filled out this form, if you gave it to them and they filled it out, it now becomes a required document by the state because your client filled it out. So you have a fiduciary duty to share this. So if you send this to your agent, which, which to your client, which I 
believe is a very good thing you should fill this out. You tell them it's not a required document. If you want to fill this form out, you can. I would highly suggest that you do because we shouldn't have anything to hide. We don't want anything to come back and bite them. And if they do fill it out, you should attach it to your listing. That should be attached to your listing as well as lead paint. You need to sign offer. If you have a PNS and you don't have a fully ex executed sign offer, you really should because that proves that you, your client has seen all of the offers. And if they say you have five offers, you rejected four, you have it that both the seller was presented the buyer's offer and they rejected that particular offer. It's just good to cover your butt. So you want to be thorough in your paperwork. So if you had five offers, you have four in there, they're rejected, they should be fully executed. They're not required, but for you, just to prove that you did present the offer to your seller and the seller signed it saying, nope, I'm not taking this offer that's 20,000 under asking. I'm gonna take one that came in above asking. So that's just a little thing there, uh, a little extra and lead paint. So that just shows you what we need before you submit the submit for review, but we made a step. So I submitted for review and I wanted to show you that. So now I want to show you how to add a, another folder within the loop. So we have a listing folder. We have other document folder. Well, let's say you are a dual agency. You have a buyer that you think would really like this. So instead of making another loop that has your buyer's name, you can just add a folder in here which you just hit again, it's on the right-hand side, it's blue, which means it's an interactive field. If you hit that, you're going to add a folder right here and we can name the folder buyer folder. So I just named this buyer folder and I can upload, if I go to templates, and I want a dual agency, you're gonna to go to templates, you're gonna to go to master master file, and you're gonna do dual agency and there's consent to dual agent buyer or consent to dual agent listing. We need the seller to know that he is, that you're representing both. And so now you'll see that that's in there and you can share this with your buyer Anytime you want, it's under the buyer folder. So you would go down here and you would add your buyer, then go up here and send this to them to, actually, this is for the listing. You would send it, actually, you would send this to the seller and then you would upload one for the buyer. So you would need one for the buyer, one for the seller. But now you have a buyer folder and a listing folder, okay? And you can always take something and drag it into, just like I did, I had this up here and I had the wrong one. So I dragged that into my listing folder and let's just add it again. You go into templates, you scroll down to the layer because this is a Massachusetts. It's a Massachusetts form looking for the dual agency, but we want the buyer one to sign. Cool thing too here, just to note is if you knew the MAR number, you could type in the MAR number and pull it up too. So I could put in 710 and it's gonna pull up the MAR because it, see, right there, 710. So you can do it by that. And so now I have the right document in there. Okay, so that's kind of cool. You can, you know, slide it, whatever. And now you have that. So I want to go into the three ways to add documents into a folder. Okay. We just showed you templates. These are all interactive, which means they can be signed electronically. So all of these are interact. There are over 3,000 real estate forms. Again, if you click in there, you're going to go to, depending on if it's a Massachusetts master file, we have New Hampshire master file, Connecticut master file, Lair, Rhode Island, and Maine. Okay. So you're going to pick the appropriate state and you're going to then type in what you're looking for and it'll pull it up. Say we need an extension. There it is. Extension of exclusive buyer agency, extension for a listing agreement, extension of time. It's going to list them all and here. You can find the one. Again, if you knew the MAR number, you could type in the MAR number as well. So that's how you do that. And again, they're all interactive forms. 
This one is you can browse it. So say an agent downloaded, uh, they sent you an offer in your email and you downloaded the offer or you saved it somewhere on your computer. So you can hit browse and you can browse anywhere your downloads. I can download any of these. I can, let me see, I'll just download these. These are, uh, these are, I'm just going to pretend this is an offer. And so now it has to be a PDF in order to browse. So we just named this Chumpsford. You can change it again to three dots on the right hand side. You can rename this and you can write fully executed offer like that. Just click off the page and it changed it. So these are interactive forms. These are PDFs only. Okay. Now, a great feature that I love, 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 and I know that nobody knows this. Most people don't know this, but every loop has a personal email address, which I love this. So the reason I like this is because we all know in this market, you might get five offers on a house. They're going to send you an email saying, here's the offer. Okay. If you open up it in dot loop, if you go to your email because you want to see that offer to see if it's a decent offer and you, they send it to you in dot loop and you click on that, it's going to create a second loop that says 35 main street. Now you have your loop that says 35 main street. And now you have the buyer agents loop that says 35 Main Street. It can be very confusing. You want to work out of the loop that you created. Never work out of a buyer agents loop. If an agent sends you a buyer, an offer through dot loop, and you do not have a loop created for you as a listing agent, please do not use their dot loop account. That's when you're going to get into a lot of trouble. Please create a loop for yourself and for your paperwork. Remember, this is your filing cabinet. So I'm going to show you how not to do that, how not to get double loops. Okay. There is a merge field that they have on that loop, but it really doesn't work. Uh, we've talked about them just taking it off. Merging loops really does not work. So this is the proper way to merge a loop. So what you're going to do is say you want to add something in here. You're going to hit this third option. Here is the email address that will drop a PDF directly into this folder right here. So you're going to copy to clipboard. It's saying it's copy. You're going to go to your email. I'm just going to find anything that has a PDF attachment. Here's one has a PDF attachment. I'm going to pretend that this is an offer. No, nope, we don't want to go there. Let me just go to somewhere else. Let me get rid of that. Uh, I just have to go to downloads. Let me go to my downloads. And I go to, I'm just going to go to downloads. Okay, so I am going to go right here. So I'm going to pretend that this is in here. It's a PDF. It's a PDF. And it's a, I'm going to take this email. Wait, let me, let me explain it better. It's better if I do it like this. Let me go to my trash. Sorry. Sorry for this. I'm going to go to my trash. I'm going to go to that where I trashed all those. Those were just PDFs. I just want to find something that's in a PDF attached like an email. So you would get it when I'm talking about. I'm just looking for um, some of these. That I I get a lot of emails. Let me just find something that has a PDF. I usually have this prepared beforehand, but I was listening to, I was on a seminar right before this. So I just want to forward it to let me see. Let me see. Let me see here. Let me go here. Oh, okay. Let's just take this. All right. So I am going to put this into my, I'm going to move this, move to inbox. I'm just going to move that into my inbox. Okay. And, okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this that has been moved into my inbox. It's a PDF right here. And I'm going to forward this to, um, Hold on one second, make sure. 
Okay, I'm going to forward this actual email to uh, and paste the link right there. And no, I don't want to do this. I don't know why it's doing this on me. I'm sorry. Please uh, hold on one second. This is the one I want to forward. I don't know why it's not doing this. So I'm going to forward this PDF forward. I'm going to paste the thing in here. And now I'm going to say offer from Tim Smith. OK, you can change that in the subject line. You could write offer right here. Offer from. OK, now I'm going to send this. So. I sent that and now I'm going to go back over here to uh, this and it's going to actually show up in here. Now, the only problem, it's going to take a little longer because that particular that that particular PDF that I forwarded was like five different PDFs. There it is. So see how that brought it in. So let me clarify because I know it was a little confusing there. Your agent, a buyer agent, sends you an email with a offer on it. What I'm asking you to do so you don't get double loops with the same name is go to dot loop first, open up the loop where that offer is coming. Then you're going to add document, you're going to copy the email, you're going to go back to that email that has the offer attached as a PDF. You're going to forward that email using this link and it will populate directly in here, which it did and it did not ask, uh, it did not make another loop. So now that's how you voided the loop. So I'm sorry that I made that a little bit confusing. I do apologize for that, but really try to get used to using this. It basically, it drops PDFs from an email directly into the loop and you can always change this. So say we wanted to change the name, offer from Jim Smith, you could do that. and say you get another offer from Terry Jones. You can then upload it in here. And what you could do if you, so say you have five offers, you can add another document, can add another folder and write offers not accepted. You can create this and now we can say, okay, we're going to move this because we didn't accept Tim's offer. And so then you're going to just keep the offer that you want and you can archive this. So once you take the five that you didn't want and you say, OK, I don't want to see this. It's in my way. If you go over here again to the three dots, you can archive this. It never gets rid of it, but it just brings it. So when you open this, it's not there, but you can always show archived and it'll show up. It's going to show up down here, the archived. There it is. OK, so and I believe you can pull these down. So say you didn't want to see these, you want this underneath this folder, you can pull it down there just like that. So you can always have a clean workspace. I like a clean workspace. So I wanted to go over that. It's uh, we have seven minutes just checking. So I wanted to go over how you add documents, how to make non, you know, uh, not to have um, multiple documents. So I'm going to show you something, how to do a PDF. So we want to unarchive this. I'm going to unarchive this. I want to open, I want to split this form. So this form, it's only one page, so I can't, but you can split a form. So usually if you have a lead paint, you should always, always, always send the lead paint. You should always have your lead paint complete brochure, not just, you should never just send the signature page of a lead paint because it's saying that you gave them the whole brochure. So if you uploaded a whole brochure, you can split a document. It has to be a PDF and you would just click the PDF and you would go and you could go under here and it would say split document. This is noticing that it's not two pages. See, it's saying it has to be two pages, but you can split a document. So you can have pages one through uh, 10, which is the brochure, and then you can separate it. Once it's signed, you can separate and just send the signature page. So that's how you do that. 
So uh, once again, okay, so in the last couple of seconds here, last couple of minutes, when should you submit for review? My, my answer to that is the same for the buyer agent and the seller agent. You should submit to your review, your folder. Once you have purchase and sale, you've gotten the purchase, you've gotten the escrow, the second escrow, and you've passed inspections, that is when you should submit for review. And that's also when you should do your check request. So you say, well, my, it's not going to close for three weeks. Well, by putting in your check request, what you're doing is you're alerting the accounting team. Hey, I have a listing. I have a, a closing coming up. And you're alerting the dot loop team. Hey, I have pretty much this is probably going to close. If you want to start reviewing and, and uh, approving it, that would be great because the worst thing you want to happen is it's already closed. You then finally submit for review and the lead paint is filled out wrong. 90% of why loops are not approved for commission, 90% is because the lead paint is filled out wrong. The initials are in the wrong spot. And believe me, it's very hard to get a buyer to sign something when the property is already closed. And because this is such a stickler for the state of Massachusetts, your loop will not be approved unless it filled out wrong. Most of the time, it's not our layer agents. We educate our agents how to fill out a lead paint. It's these other brokerages are not training their agents on how to, uh, 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 to fill it out appropriately. And so now you're trying to track this down. It's holding up your commission. It's gonna hold up the buyer agent's commission because you did not submit it before the closing. So again, when should you submit for re uh, Submit your loop for approval and make a check request after you've gotten the purchase sale signed, after you've gotten the deposit and you've passed inspections, I would definitely submit for your review. That's when you should do that. So I wanted to go over that uh, for you. Um, and very important, I wanted to show you, remember how I said that if this was a loop that said, Tim, I just wanna go back. We're going to create a loop that says Mr. and Mrs. Just real quick. I want to create this loop. This is Jack and Joanne, Joan Smith. Okay. We're going to continue. We're going to, they are going to be our buyers. So we're going to pick buyer. We're not going to put a picture. We're going to do done. So remember your buyer here now. Okay. So now we're going to open this loop. We need to change this because we know all loops need to be submitted by property address. They cannot be submitted by your client's name. So what you do is once you have an offer, you got a purchase and sale, you're going to change this to under agreement. You're going to put in the purchase price and you're going to put in the day. It's closing, very important. And under here, under view details, you're going to go right here where it says use custom name. And now you're going to put the address that they're buying. And you're going to save that. So now it's just changed it from Jack and Joan Smith. If you want, notice I didn't put a space here. All you got to do is you go here, use your arrows, and you can put the space in there just like this. And if you save, it's going to change it. So now you can look this loop up by either name. If you remember it as Jack and Joan, you can look it up as Jack and Joan. It's still going to pull that up. Jack and Joan Smith right there. Or you could pull it up by the new address, which is the listing agent, the, the, the street. So either way, either way, you can pull it up like that. So I wanted to show you that. And in the very last minutes that we have, I want to show you something that I really love that I think agents don't use. Now, you got to remember, I am not an active agent. This is a training. So, but I want to show you that up here, there's this, re, there's this icon called reporting. What it's taking, it's taking all of your loops that you've created and it's reporting by status. So it's going to show you all of your if you hit this, it's showing me my under agreements. Now you got to remember, I do not, this is not uh, an active, let me go to, let me go to my office here. Let me show you, it'd be easier if I could do it this way. 
this is my, I'm going to pretend now, this is my loop. This is, so if I hit reporting, you're going to see it's giving you that in January, these are all completed. I had 2 million in completed transactions in January. In January, I had 375 that are still under agreement in January that never closed in January. These are ones that fell through and these, the gray is starting. So I love this deal because at a click of a button, you can see how your business is doing over a year. So the most important thing and for this to work is you have to make sure that on your loops, you are putting the status. If things have sold, sell them sold. If they're under agreement, put them under agreement. Okay, remember, never ever change a sold to an archive. Archive are only things that have fallen apart. So I really like this feature. I don't think people are using it. Again, it will tell you what your business, where your business took a dive, where it was really good. And so then you can use a business plan and say, wow, my business really nosedived in May, which means that I wasn't out there sending my sphere of influence uh, e-letters or the war report or to let them know, hey, I'm still working, even though it's mid-February, I'm still working if you know anybody looking or buying. So I really like this tool. This is your loop tool. This will bring you to your loops. This is your tab. These are your people section. I love this section because you can add and set these up and share these with people. So say you have home inspectors that you really like, your client asks you, you can add home inspectors and then you can share this with your clients. They're going to get these these are people that you can review and you can add more than three and you can share them with your clients, which is awesome. I also like the people section. These are your contacts because once you put them in here one time, they're gonna be in here forever. Notice how these are all the attorneys. I do purchase and sales for my agents in my office. So these are attorneys that I use quite often. Some of them have really weird last names. I don't have to remember. Once I put them in there, they're in there for good. And so you could do it by, you know, attorney, you could do it by inspectors, you could just put it in there. So I really like adding contacts. And this is your templates, which is, again, where I showed you how to find your templates. So that's it for today in our training, Dot Loop Training. My name is Lisa Perugio, and today we did Dot Loop Training. Uh, and I promise you, if you take this one hour training, you will be 75% proficient in Dot Loop. And probably 90% more proficient in dot loop than anybody out there that's using dot loop. So just, and the great thing about this, if I've talked too fast for you, it's all being recorded. It is being, you can go to facebook.com forward slash real online agent resources. And you can find not only this one, but you can find the one on marketing. You can find the one on how to get paid. You can find all of the trainings that we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 1230 and 130. So until March, I am done for the month. And until March, I'll see you uh, in March. If you have any questions whatsoever, if you get stuck in that loop, just send an email to happyagent at layerrealty.com. They will assign your question to me and I will get you the answer and help you through it. So please, if you get stuck in that loop, just send an email to happyagent.com and they will assign your question to me and I will reach out to you either by email or I will give you a call. All right, so until next month, see you again. Thank you, bye.